and world's biggest electoral exercise is on for the last five hours. 97 crore voters have been registered and those are the visuals coming in of Amit Shah, uh, the BJP, uh, the chief minister of Gujarat, Bupendra Patel, and also the state president of the BJP present there as Amit Shah will be heading any moment now to... Uh, to file the nomination papers. Uh, you can see Bhupendra Patel sitting next to Home Minister Amit Shah. This is an important battle. He is aiming for a record margin this time around. When we look at these visuals, we'll try and connect with Vasudha, who is in Gandhinagar. But first up, Aarti Jairat, Amit Shah, uh, from being uh, the General Secretary in charge of Uttar Pradesh, ensuring 72 seats in 2014, was seen as, uh, as, as this... Uh, you know, the man of the moment in many ways, the man who ensured that Narendra Modi becomes the Prime Minister in 2014, to the Home Minister before that five years as party president, then contesting the Lok Sabha polls in 2019 from Gandhi Nagar, Home Minister of India, and now going for his second, uh, you know, uh, seeking second term from Gandhi Nagar, his own trajectory. Yeah, it's been a remarkable trajectory actually. And, uh, you know, I mean, the, the very fact that he was able to transplant Narendra Modi from Gujarat yes. to Varanasi and ensure that huge victory for him in 2014, personal victory in Varanasi and, of course, for the BJP. You know, I think it just shows the kind of uh, the, his skills as an election manager. And, you know, I mean, people call him Chanakya and so on. But he is definitely, I think, one of the chief brains behind the BJP's phenomenal uh, domination of the electoral, uh, you know, landscape yes. for the last 10 years. Yes, and uh, that, that new BJP that we talk about, Amitabh, uh, he is the architect of that new BJP. As the BJP president, someone who, uh, you know, almost took that pledge that the party office of the BJP has to be in each and every district of India. Yeah, so he laid the foundation of the new BJP and strengthen the cadre and the organization in, in each and every district. His stature has grown in the last 10 years. And from 2019 to 24, if you see, hmm. he has also come out of the shadow of Prime Minister Modi. If you hmm. see his speeches on Article 370 and CA and the debates which he has done in the parliament, he has come out very prepared, sharp. And that's what I think is the highlight of this five year. His oratory skills have definitely significantly improved. And probably he is preparing himself for the next innings. So, while we look at those visuals and we'll go come back to it because Mr. Shah will be filing his nominations in another 25 minutes. But for the moment, we are shifting focus to battleground Tamil Nadu. 39 seats in that crucial state. The BJP believes, and so do most analysts, including Amitabh and Aarti here in the studio, that if the BJP were to cross that number, the magic number that the BJP has set for itself, that the Prime Minister has set for himself and the party of 370, then they have to make inroads, they have to get numbers from this state, a crucial state of Tamil Nadu. Those are the visuals coming in of uh, Sadhguru, who went to cast his vote. Uh, you know, an important figure in, in, in the socio-political, cultural space uh, uh, of, of India, I would say, not just limited to Tamil Nadu. Uh, Sam is joining us live. Uh, Sam, even as we spe uh, speak, we have seen Rajni Kant cast his vote early morning, also trying to send that message to first-time voters in particular. It's, it's, a, it's an important ride, go and exercise. And now we are seeing an important cultural, uh, religious figure in Sadhguru exercising his right. That's right, uh, Maria, but the numbers coming from Election Commission in terms of the voting, a polling percentage till 11 o'clock is not that encouraging. It's just 17.02% till 11 o'clock. That's in four hours. So it's a long weekend and that's why many icons are encouraging people to step out to cast their vote so that uh, it would matter. We'll have to wait and see. It's too early still. Many may wait for the heat to subside, may come and cast their franchise a little later in the evening. We come to you from the central Chennai constituency, uh, where you see a good lineup of uh, people waiting to cast their votes. And uh, 
Uh, it's traditionally a DMK bastion. And let's speak to some of the voters. Uh, what are the key issues for you this time before you decide to vote for young people like you? For you? No, no, no key issues. No key issues. No key issues. Okay, but you, you, made, you made up your mind. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Still, voters reluctant to speak to us, but largely, it's a triangular contest in uh, Tamil Nadu, Maria, between the ruling DMK and the AIA DMK and the BJP trying to break new grounds here. Can we speak to you? What are the key issues for you this time? Hi. Sorry. What are the key issues for you this time in this election? I think uh, upgrading the infrastructure of the government of Tamil Nadu and uh, looking forward to seeing a great leadership here. Yeah. Many young people, how about you? Yeah, similarly, we are looking forward for a good leadership who can, you know, at least listen and address our concerns. Is it on the basis of local issues or national issues? Uh, probably national issues this time. Okay. National issues. First time voters? Yeah. <laughs> excited? Very excited. Okay. Can, can we speak to you? Yeah. What are the key issues for you this time? What are the issues for you this time? No, no, no issues. Okay. Okay, so that's the, that's, the, that's the larger picture. You want to speak? What are the national issues for you? What are the national issues? Nothing specific. Nothing? Okay. Interesting, and, uh, Sam. The larger picture, of course, as I told Maria, it's yes. between the ruling DMK. And interestingly, th those two young voters or first-time voters uh, said that the national issues are important for them. I can see Nikunj joining us as well, our senior managing editor who is on ground in Bastar. Uh, Nikunj, what is the temperature like right now in Bastar? 45, 46 degrees and uh, what are you seeing? And how has the shift been? Because as a, a journalist who has covered multiple elections and also seen the transformation of Bastar, uh, what are you seeing which is different from what, we, what you saw last time around? Well, yes, Maria, you remind me of the fact that this is my fifth general election, you know, this is the fifth yeah. general election that I'm covering, uh, more, many more uh, assembly elections, of course. But then let me take you to this uh, booth in Bastar. Let's first talk about this. This is a very unique booth in Bastar where two polling stations have been established. One polling sp station has been established with special permission from the Election Commission of India where voters from deep inside the jungle, some 30 kilometers inside, have been brought out. Nearly 1,200 voters have been brought out uh, under, the, under a security umbrella. And uh, that is because of the reason that in that uh, polling station, 30 kilometers deep inside the jungles of Bastar, it is not possible. It was concluded by the Election Commission of India and the security apparatus and the local administration here that it was not possible to safely conduct the elections because there would have obviously could have been an untoward incident and could ha uh, could have led to violence or Naxals intervening in the poll process, which obviously the Election Commission of India does not want. So this is, as you can see, it's very rushed and it's rushed because there is a special booth that has been set up for the people impacted or people who could have been impacted there right to franchise or their right to vote could have been impacted due to the Naxal violence and they have been brought from 30 kilometers inside to this polling station with a, under a special mandate of the election commission by the state administration and they are also voting here. So that's why it looks quite rushed. It is quite, uh, uh, you know, thickly uh, populated at, even at this point in time as we speak. Although it is almost uh, it is 12 p.m. and it's extremely hot, almost 45 degrees uh, in Bastar. And now to talk about the transformation of Bastar, yes, it's 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 it's, it's transformed from the uh, last 16 years that I have been visiting this place. But uh, one thing is for sure that the challenges remain. Security forces have made deep ingress. Uh, civil administration, the CEO, the BDO, as it is popularly known, the district collector, the administration have made deep ingress into the forest. But remember, these are not revenue areas, Maria. These are forest areas, and forest areas do pose their own unique challenges. And those, ch those challenges, despite all the developmental push of both the state and the central governments and the security umbrella that you can throw in at any point in time, as the young SSP was explaining to us, that nearly 45,000 men of only the paramilitary troops component deployed all over the Bastar for the peaceful conduct of the exercise. Despite all of that, it will remain challenging and it is challenging. 
and as you move inside in the interior you will see one company's strength sometimes one platoon strength of the central armed police forces deep inside the jungle trying to dominate the area trying to ensure that there is no violence there is no movement of naxals there is no attack on the polling parties while going inside or retreating or even at the polling stations like this you see that each of these polling stations this is a sensitive polling stations like most in bastar each of them have a central paramilitary troop component so as i said that you know despite all your push to ensure a peaceful free and fair election uh, it's never going to be easy but just sim- the terrain simply po- possesses so many so many challenges that to surmount each one of them will never be an easy job so that's what that exercise is on one thing one can say with some amount of surety that the polling percentage is certainly going to breach the last times record which was close to 68 69 and i see a high degree of enthusiasm even in the uh, rural areas amongst the voters of course rural areas is almost always higher than the cities but despite the intense heat a high degree of enthusiasm in the voters maria how how fascinating again the story that's coming from bastar uh, nikunj thank you so much and let me put that question to amitab and aarti here uh, you know the description that uh, nikunj was giving uh, these are signs of a strong democracy those visuals coming in particularly from bastar once upon a time it was about poll boy being boycotted it was about uh, you know the threat from machines. the naxalites yes you know the naxalites used to issue yes. a boycott threat yes. and uh, people just stayed uh, indoors they didn't come out to vote you know what is really impressive maria is did you see the long line of women yes again i mean to go back to the point that you made earlier you know look at the number of women who have braved a recent naxal yes. attack and come out to exercise their franchise you know i think that uh, it's a it's a expression of uh, you know confidence that their vote matters mm. and i think this is a really big thing for democracy that if people believe that their vote matters and they come out to vote then i think it's great but i do wish that political parties would see this enthusiasm amongst women and give more representation to them yeah, it should not be about women as a vote bank That's anymore That's right it should be about giving women and even in the studio right now there are two women in Amitabh <laughs> the percentage yeah. of women in each and every sphere is increasing I mean yeah they they are the king makers in in many states we've seen uh, if you see Bastar in 2014 the turnout was just 60% in 2019 70% mm. i see it as an assimilation of areas which were bereft of development mm. in the past 10 years what has happened is that the development and the schemes of the prime minister narendra modi has reached every nook and corner so when do you adhere to the boycott calls mm. when you see that there has been no development and you uh, rather uh, agree with what the naxalites or the maoists were saying but when you see that development has is taking place mm. the pm awas yojana ujwala yojanas have reached every nook and corner including the st mm. reserve seats and districts mm. you start participating in the democracy because the, the more you participate the more you get integrated with the uh, country and the more the development benefits start taking in yes and the more you realize the power of your vote yeah and how how extremely powerful that one single vote absolutely. is absolutely i think that confidence is that just, confidence you know, is on display here yes. for women to brave heat and also uh, what happened just 24 hours back is 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 these are positive signs of uh, democracy in function democracy in action electoral process in action here in india uh, so that's what we are seeing uh, i'm going to shift focus again back to telang uh, in fact uh, tamil nadu 39 seats there first let's listen in to what um, udanidhi stalin and anamalai the poster boy of the bjp in the state had to say after exercising their right and then i come back to the guests you campaigned across tamil nadu this time is this 2024 tougher than 2019 in your view no no it's going to be tougher for the opposite team not for us it's uh, i met almost all the 40 cons- constituencies all, all across tamil nadu i think people are having a very uh, 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 very good, good image for the cm as well as the government uh, but the lot of beneficiaries a uh, lot of things have been done uh, uh, the poll promises have been completed i think the people of tamil nadu will definitely support our uh, if the dmk sweeps elections do we see mr udinidhi as deputy chief minister and you have to ask the same minister now. last question the prime minister has been targeting on no no that was uh, 
that was uh, Tamil Nadu Youth Minister and DMK Youth Wing Leader Udinidhi Stalin talking to us in Chennai with Suresh, Sam Daniel, Find Your TV. Today I have done my democratic duty and it is an important duty for every citizen of our country because our country is a functioning democracy where the citizens have to make the democracy to function every five years by coming out, turning up in large numbers and voting. And today we are extremely confident that uh, people will repose their trust in good people, people will repose their trust in good governance and people will stand with people who stood with them over the last 10 years. I am extremely confident that Tamil Nadu will witness a historic change on June 4th and uh, all our candidates everywhere they are standing with people. I am sure the people will honour all of our hard working candidates who stood with them. Anamalai there uh, and I would mention one experience which I had on the cross country train yatra which I did. And Amita, whosoever spoke about anything to do with Tamil Nadu and you know resident of uh, Tamil Nadu, they had for them BJP in the state is Anamalai. So he has a good recall value. So if BJP were to do well then this man will actually be credited for more than just ensuring his, his, his seat in Coimbatore in case if it happens. Yeah, because he has, he has slogged hard yes. for the past two, three years and if you see he has a good fan following yeah. amongst the 18 the hero, to 29 hero worship batch. which the state has been Yeah, 18 to 29. So that is roughly 20% of the voters. Yeah. He's fairly young yeah. and what happens is that there is a leadership vacuum in post MGR, Jalalita and yeah. Karnanadi era. Yeah. And he is, though he is pitched against Stalin and EPS and OPS, since he is younger, people compare him with Udayanidhi, mm. the next generation of leadership of AIADMK or DMK and that is where he scores the point. Of course, he's he's locked in a tough battle and BJP is there for a vote share play and a long term play, but it sees that there is an opportunity, there are people, at least the young, uh, uh, the young voters who are fed up of this Dravidian style of politics which has been ruling the state for the past 50 years and there is where it sees hope. But it's a, uh, you know, it's, it's equivalent to uh, climbing a mountain. It's a Himalayan task for the BJP in the state. Absolutely. But uh, can, okay, let me ask this question more directly. 2019, nobody thought there will be a West Bengal. But it happened, right? So can Tamil Nadu be the West Bengal of 2019? So I think, uh, you know, it's no, no two states in India are comparable. Uh, yes. And certainly not uh, West Bengal, uh, you know, in the east and Tamil Nadu in the south. Yeah. Uh, the only real comparison that can be drawn between them is the, uh, you know, regional sentiments and the subnationalism that is very, very prevalent in both the states. Yes, in Bengal, uh, you know, the, the BJP sprung a surprise last time by winning 18 seats. Uh, but I think to some extent that was because of the complete collapse of the left, mm. which happened after Mamta Banerjee, you know, won the assembly election. No, but why can't we, ex what we are also witnessing is near collapse of AIA DMK. Yes, but remember that the, you know, in Tamil Nadu, you've had a hundred years of Dravidian mm. politics. Mm. Anna Malai is definitely a dynamic leader. He's very energetic. I think he's done a lot to bring BJP into the conversation in yes, Tamil Nadu. Yes. But he's been there for just two years maybe, you know, two years as BJP chief. I don't know, I, I'm not sure of the exact date, but it's about two years. Is two years enough to overturn a hundred years of Dravidian politics? I don't think so. Okay. I think, yes, for the future, I think he's, you know, definitely a he's fine for the BJP. He's, but a, he's promising. So 2024 may not be. But 2024 may, may not, not be his. 20, 2024 is the 2014 election of West Bengal is, is probably the comparable. Ah. Where BJP won three seats and it, cre and it created a base. For and 20, from there, and from there it, it, it took on and captured the entire space of Congress and CPM as the main opposition. So that is what we might see. Okay, we'll try and play more sound bites because... Uh, the sound bites of uh, former finance minister P. Chidandram and others have also come. But when you say that uh, 2024 Tamil Nadu is likely to be, to be 2014 of uh, Bengal. But at that time, there was, we did not really see BJP focus as much on Bengal. The, Beng the Bengal idea became relevant only post 2017 
uh, Uttar Pradesh Assembly elections victory. You know, yeah. when, when the BJP, for the first time in its national executive, and I remember covering that in Bhuvaneshwar, uh, after 2017 assembly victory of Uttar Pradesh, uh, Mr. Shah and, and Prime Minister Modi had spoken about the look east policy. Because then they started focusing on Bengal and on uh, Urissa. But here is a focus on the Tamil, on, on uh, Tamil Nadu in particular for the last five years. There is a Tamil Samagam which happened. There is an attempt at integration. There is that entire Ramayan trail which was done. So there is a pattern which is different from 2014. Will, will it uh, be a correct assessment? See, the pattern is different because probably in the case of West Bengal, the party realized in 2017, as you're saying, hmm. after the UP elections, that they have probably maxed out in the Hindi northern belt. or the Hindi belt and they need to expand in east. Hmm. So West Bengal and Odisha where the second and third states where Modi did the highest number of rallies yes. in 2019 after UP. Now this realization of maxing out in the north and east and the west perhaps set in just after the 2019 elections hmm. that now we have to adopt a look south policy as we have adopted a look east policy in 2019 and gain from it. Hmm. But for that they had only two years perhaps. For this, because it is a tighter battle, because not, not only Tamil Nadu, in fact, Kerala also yes. and Andhra Telangana, so they have started the preparations well in advance. Hmm. But uh, Maria, uh, the fact is that I think the, there was a blow to the BJP hmm. uh, in its you know, attempt to look south and reach out to the hmm. south when it lost the Karnataka election That's right. and lost the them only, badly. Yes. You know, it wasn't a, a minor defeat, yes. it was a major defeat. Hmm. And then when they lost the Telangana elections as well, you know, so two southern states, one after the other, mm -hmm. you lose, you know, it does dent your outreach too considerably. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think that, that we did hear voices on your channel, people saying that, uh, you know, the prime minister has come, he's done eight rallies, eight visits to Tamil Nadu, I think, in the last one year or one in and fact, a half 30 years. In all. Or 30 and all, okay. But where was he when we were hit by floods mm. two years ago? You know, when half of Tamil Nadu was underwater. Mm. There was nothing from the union government. So, you know, this is the point that, you know, you come at election time, you know, I think, you know, in Tamil Nadu, the, uh, you know, literacy rate is quite high. You know, awareness is also quite high. It's not like UP, which is a backward state. You know, so I think... Not anymore. I come uh, from Bihar, the neighboring state. I'm talking about UP and I'm half from UP because my okay. mother came from UP. So, you know, and I go there very, very often. Hmm. The fact is you can't compare it to Tamil Nadu. Yes, you, you can't know, I mean, Tamil yeah. Nadu, you yeah. know, every indicator is better. You know, it's whether certain. it's health care or it's state, education. I mean, we, are, we are comparing a landlocked state versus states like Kerala or Tamil No, but Nadu. I think all of South uh, is, all of South yeah. is ahead of the North. You know, hmm. it's not just uh, Karnataka. I mean, it's not just Tamil Nadu, it's Karnataka, it's Kerala, it's Telangana, all of them. Hmm. You know, their, their levels of education, their, you know, just their indices are higher because I think they have, this is an area, there's been a social revolution in the yes. South. You know, over a hundred years uh, ago, and a, yes, accompanied happened, yes. by a cultural revolution, which has yet to take place, well, yes, which is now taking that place perhaps in the North. That Tamil uh, identity which uh, you know the prime minister has successfully played on as as gujarati asmita and now he's you know invoking that and not making bjp a pariah which it was in 2019 with how will that play out and also the caste social engineering that we talk about which has worked in other states which is also at play here all these aspects uh, we'll continue this discussion my Producer is telling me to take a short break and I'll be back. Uh, this time we'll be shifting focus to Rajasthan.